Good Friday morning, and welcome to Ice HTV, the internal combustion engine okay. age YouTube channel that talks about all my cars and trucks and motorcycles and the SUVs, the dogs. Why, it's a rainy Friday morning. It's actually cool. Good Friday morning there for all those people that watch my channel. Thanks so much for being such nice, nice subscribers. I think I have the best subscribers out there because I think that you radiate what I radiate, and that is... Let's try to live life the right way. You know what I mean? I mean, come on. Yeah, people are probably laughing their ass off in that statement. Here's a guy talking to more damn cars than anybody I know, and a guy buys a car every other week. Okay, all right. Well, hey, just trying to keep an upbeat there for you. But hey, it's a good Friday morning. Is it a good Friday morning? And uh, wow, what a week. You know, great week, I think, of conversations because we had the Monday conversation of the tax man, and then we had the Tuesday conversation of obligations. Then we had the Wednesday conversation of borrow. Then we had the Thursday conversations of interest. And I thought, what better way to uh, you know, f make the final day of the morning conversations Friday of the, uh, the mood, the mood conversations. Because I think it's such an emotional week. And you've probably even heard that through my channel of sometimes the aggravation of me working so hard to build a YouTube channel and it doesn't grow as fast as I want. And the monies aren't there like I thought they'd be. So it's been an emotional week for me. I'm sure those people that watch my channel kind of think, ah, is this guy going to give up on us? You know, that's not my goal. My goal is to build a bigger channel. And uh, with more subscribers and me making more money, I think it'll just get better as time progresses. But here we are with the, uh, the Bronco. I took the time last night to clean it because uh, it was just trashed. Busy, busy day yesterday. And I'm so, so... <coughs> disappointed of another fiasco on my another car that I created by myself and that's why I thought the mood the mood conversation perfect for the story of the Mustang and for the release of the uh, the new Super Snake yes the new Super Snake Mustang S650 series this model series here has just been released so it's pretty exciting news on that and if it's all about the Mustang and the mood and Keithy boy, you got to stay down here because you're just too much wound up as always. So just stay down here and play with me at the ball. Okay? Go on, pups. Go on. Go on, get up there. Go on. Go on, everybody. Yeah, there you go. So uh, get that in order. And the bird situation, eh, you know, it's 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 okay. It's not 100% perfect. But let's get Keithy his entertainment this morning. And that would be uh, his ball. I bought a box of balls. And uh, there you go. So here you go, bud. So let's get you out here and going for the morning. Oh, you can't get it. Oh, does it go in the back? So uh, so anyways, the mood, the mood conversations. Um, I think the cars so radiate right back in our life of our mood, of how we feel and what you drive. I was talking to my good friend Tim last night. We just have so much fun uh, going over the stories of, our, of us growing up. I mean, it's just he's such a great friend of mine, my best friend ever. We we're just on the same page. It makes us laugh. And it's so many funny stories. But he was talking last night about the different cars he has, and he drives one car versus another car. I said, yeah, but then people look at you differently. When you drive a certain car, look at this here. See, now the birds, so see, look, look at my poor Ram truck. Yeah, the poor Ram truck. You know what's so funny? Is one of my uh, yeah one of my lenses is a little covered up there. I think we're over in here real quick. I washed this thing last night, and guess what? The bird got it. It's raining this morning. Not breaking my heart because I spent yesterday putting together equipment, getting ready for a job today. And I'll tell you what, time I got done doing that, you know, my daughter's like, man, I just don't want to do this job more. I'm done. I'm just freaking always crawling around my hands and knees. So let's try to find ourselves a respectable towel here. Sorry for the... <laughs> He's probably going, Iceman! What, what are you doing, Iceman? Iceman, wipe this thing off without being so rude to you. Sorry. I hope I'm not getting you get sick while watching my channel. Get yeah, sick, right? Well, if people too much too fast, it can get you nauseous. And I know that. But oh my gosh. So the mood... And here's Kiefer. It's funny. Listen to this background music, right? Yeah. Is that about driving nutty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I spent you got challenges on growing your channel. Oh, we got the, pl the lightning plugged in. I remember to I remember to plug in this thing. Uh, so yeah, so I thought the mood conversation would be so cool today because 
But our life so revolves around these cars. I mean, people that aren't really car fanatics, you still have to look at them and say, well, if you live in the city, you can get around public transportation. But if you're the average person that lives outside the city, and you live in the city, you have, you're going to have to have a vehicle. And that vehicle will radiate kind of who you are. It'll radiate probably the mood you have. And, and that's what drives us to buy these vehicles. Because typically mood, you know, the definition of mood, it's an emotional state of mind. And, and boy, oh boy, could you say more than ever in our society that <laughs> the mood, the mood um, brings uh, reasoning to, to people more than ever? I mean, sincerely. With this, uh, it's so funny. So I try to walk away from Kiefer to keep that noise, you know, from me. But he follows me. So, <laughs> and I know this this very. Uh, it's really you know I cleaned it. I washed this car last night, and the, it, but this is the bees. So this is the wood bees. So now I got the wood. Now I got the bumblebees or the carpenter bees working in my barn, which they've been here forever, eating my wood and trashing my car. But it's not half as bad as what I did to, my, to this window right here. I don't know if you can see this or not. Can you see this right here? If you saw what I did yesterday, this car. I, I mean, I am so mad, mad at myself. The bottom line is, I have to get a whole different shop. When I start working on equipment and doing things, I don't know why the hell I do, do it in this freaking shop. I mean, I spray oversprayed paint in this freaking thing. If you know that whole story. I destroyed this front left window by using a grinder to cut metal. So I was here yesterday actually trying to teach Julia how to use a grinder and cut metal. I had it right here, and the sparks were flying more like this direction, but my daughter was scared of how the sparks would be hitting off of this here, and so I changed the angle, and, and just for me, not thinking it through, I'm now using a grinder that's shooting metal up against my window. It's totally destroyed this front window. It's ruined. So there's a $1,000 bill. I don't know if you can see through that. I just don't know if you can see it. But it's just little, little, you know, speckles. And so there's, you know, there's a there's a thousand dollar mistake. Just, just, uh, yeah. How do you feel? Anybody here knows that owns a car. As soon as something happens to your pride and joy, what's your mood? And especially when you do it. And I tell people all the time, people are paranoid as hell that someone's going to hit them. People are paranoid as hell that somebody's going to kill you. You know, in the end, the odds are you're going to kill yourself. Or in the end, you're going to be the person that's damaged your car. I mean, that's just the way it plays out. I mean, but everybody's paranoid. Oh, somebody's going to ding my car. Ah, the odds are you'll be the person that does something to your car. You run into the curb with your splitter. You run um, next, to the, next to a curb and you, you scrape the hell out of your wheels. I mean, who doesn't know these stories? You back up your vehicle and you don't realize you're so close to something and bump. I mean, why is the body shop and the glass industry in business? Yeah, right. So... So your mood, I mean, how do you think my mood was after I just about crashed on this motorcycle? Yeah. It's like, whoa. I mean, one of my subscribers like, you should get a full face helmet. And I do. I do have a full face helmet, just for the record. I know. I hear you. Hear you on that loud and clear. So so it's the mood. It's the emotion. It's, it's, he's probably getting emotional disturbed. But, and this is so funny. So look, he, he follows me everywhere I go. Hey. And he's with the squeaky ball. He says, I mean, he's just start driving you nuts yet? Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I gave him the ball, right? I know. Yeah. Yeah, challenging. Put him upstairs in the damn office. It's like having a little baby, right? Anyway, but it's kind of raining up here today. So, anyways, the mood, I mean, that's what drives all of us in so many ways to do things. And, it's you know, it's it's... An emotional moment, an emotional emotional decision. I mean, you know as well as I do, if you go to a car dealership and you're really excited about something, but then the salesperson, the sales manager doesn't have the best mood, you, all of a sudden you kind of start stepping back and saying, you know, I just don't know if this is the dealership I want to deal with. I mean, who hasn't been through this? Who hasn't been through you negotiate a deal on a car and by the time you get in the back end of the finance department, your mood starts to set, I should start to a change because you start to see the real numbers in front of you and you're like, whoa, you're like, wow, you're like, ooh. So that, I mean, that's because all of a sudden that emotional happiness went to, to emotional distress. And that's the number one reason 
car dealerships, motorcycle dealerships to a degree too, want to put you in a car and you drive that car. Because they know if you're emotionally happy, they've already overcome the first uh, challenge. And that is that now you're, you're happy in the happy moment. I mean, the biggest running joke in business is if you're a salesperson, you take everybody to lunch. You know why you take everybody to lunch? Because an hour after they've eaten lunch, every so lethargic and, and kind of in the happy mood, you can probably negotiate deals better than you could have when it's, um, uh, it's before lunchtime. And everybody's got attitudes because they're hungry. Who doesn't know this relationships in life with a wife or kids? When everybody's hungry, the attitudes are so different. Oh, my gosh. This is crazy. I think I should take the ball away from them. Hey, Keith, you're going to take the ball away from me, dude. There's no way. You're going to drive us all nuts. Go find something else to do. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. How do you think he feels? Here's a ball for you. Here's a tennis ball. Come here. Ball. Oh, here's one. This one's worn out, so it doesn't squeak. Come here, boy. Come on. Yeah, let's get him. There's your ball. Get your ball. There you go. There you go. There you go. Let's see if this one squeaks. Nope. He killed the squeaky. There you go. Take that one. Hey, why didn't I do it from the get-go, right? Jesus Christ. I hear you watch my channel. I don't know about driving you nuts. But he's like, oh, but it ain't good enough. Look, look at this. This ain't good enough. So he's going to try to climb up in the bench and get the other one. Look at this. Sincerely. Are you seeing this? Oh, my gosh. So his emotional, he just had emotions. Yeah, he's not happy. Daddy took his nice ball away. But I'm happy I'm listening to the damn squeaky thing anymore. So anyways, it's all about the emotions that drive us to do things. But the emotional, you know, but the emotions go, look at this. Look, are you seeing this? But what I wanted to show you this morning, I got to go turn on my YouTube channel and get you tuned in. Because the boy, this is unbelievable. Valuable. Here's a per, here's the same ball that does the same thing, but it's like a car. This is like the Ice Age guy. This guy doesn't like electric balls because they make no noise. He wants the Ice Age noise. So let's get the uh, the TV going, and I'm going to show you that new Super Snake. This is you know, so it's all about the motion. So for me, here's what's so dangerous. Here is Ford. Well, and just over the record, Ford has uh, no Kiever no has just uh, done a teaser on the next, most likely, GT350, Mach 1, or GT500. I think it's going to probably be the GT, uh, GT350 GT or a Mach 1. I don't think, well, no, because the Dark Horse is a Mach 1. But let's look here. Look here. What's this guy here saying? Down town, yeah, yeah. Who doesn't know this? This guy? Look, 135,000 okay, so downtown LA. Views. I'm going to give you a tour. And yeah. uh, I mean, it is, it's unreal compared to I mean, what Does this anybody thing not know was. this stuff right now? Let me sincerely. All right, let's see if we can get here. Uh, I don't really want to see that guy because that guy, man, I had a good video going of the actual Shelby company. But let's see if this populates. So, this is the brand new Shelby Super Snake. Listen to that bad. I mean, come on. Do you hear this thing? See that supercharger? So there's a brand new Super Snake. Now, for those who watch my channel, and uh, let's so go back and let's see if the other one populates with it. No, they didn't. It's just too bad. Because the, uh, so the actual Tuscany Corp, yeah, it's just never as easy, you guys. It's never easy. Because what I watched on my own phone should have populated here. But anyways, the, uh... So, the representative from Tuscany. So, just to give you a heads up. For some people, are like, what is a Super Snake versus what's a Shelby? So, the Shelby product is from Carroll Shelby from back in the 60s, some racing cars. And for Carroll Shelby, he created his own iconic brand. And... And so Ford, Ford has the rights to the Shelby brand. But there's a company called Tuscany Corp that's out of Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, and out of uh, Indiana that have the rights to build um, Shelby branded products. So for the, uh, for the Shelby Super Snake, see, people, this is where it gets a little confusing. So the guy can say, I have a Shelby. And then the guy says, well, I've got a Shelby Super Snake. Well... The Shelby typically is built from Ford Direct. A Shelby Super Snake is built from a company that's separate from Ford that has the rights to brand it as a Super Snake. So you're going to see the release of the brand new Ford Mustang 
Super Snake 2024, that is the new S650 series, that's the model number they use, that's going to be a totally badass car. And for me, it's like, ah, oh, here we go. You know, here I go, getting ready to go on a project on a dark horse. And in so many ways, why would I just sell this and get a Super Snake? Well, <laughs> Super Snake will be double the price of this car. Typically, a Super Snake is like a $120,000, $125,000 car with no markup. And since there's only stuck dealers in the area that can get these and stuck states that can get them, it's challenging to get one and you're going to pay premium. But here's the point of this conversation for you to explain a little better in detail what they do. So what, what, when, you, when I walked out the door this morning and I showed you that Ford Mustang GT that my daughter drives, what Tuscany does, they take a real base Mustang from Ford and then they gut it out and they build it into a high performance race car by changing out all the, the suspension components, the wheels, the brakes, the rotors. Uh, then they get into the, uh, into the actual engine and they supercharge it. And then they put in a heavier duty Tremec six speed manual transmission. And then they do the special body um, accents and flares. And so they end up personalizing it into what they call a Shelby Super Snake. It's not a GT500, but it's everything that a GT500 is in so many ways. And so for you, you can go to a dealership and order one of these, and, but, there's, but there's a catch there. Only certain states allow this. So in my surrounding area, in Maryland, you cannot buy a Shelby Super Snake new from a dealership. Maryland will not recognize that car as a legal car. It's been modified. So Virginia isn't as green a state as Maryland is. And so for Virginia, Cream Sterling Ford is one of the local dealers. Um, Oarsman Ford is a local dealer that can actually sell you a factory ordered Super Snake from the Tuscany Corp. So if you watch my channel, you can reach out to these, you can look, you can look up Shelby Super Snake um, dealers and they're throughout the country, but some states don't allow them to sell those brand new. So you have to find a, a car from outside the state. So, and I did that with my Super Snake sport truck. And just now watching that little video I just showed you, that's a very badass car. It's gonna have 830 horsepower, and it's gonna be a rare car because it's very expensive. But the question to me is, I, I think that thing's gonna come in at a buck 50. I think it's gonna be a $150,000 car, $140,000 car. And then once again, when you call King Sterling Ford, their position will be, well, I'll be so lucky we're a selling dealer and you're gonna pay premium for this car, and we want 25 grand over. This stuff goes on all the time. I mean, and then, I don't know what Oarsman Ford and Manassas will do. They'll probably be a little more diplomatic. So, but anyways, that's an emotional feeling for me because here I'm looking at the GT, GTD, which you've seen that on my channel yesterday. And sure, is that, is that an emotional accomplishment if I pull that off? It would be an incredible feat. Uh, it won't be till July, that Ford announces who gets the cars and who doesn't. This is no lie. So it will not be till July that Ford will go through all these applications and check mark who gets one, who doesn't. Be unbelievable. I mean, in some ways, it's just like, wow. I mean, wow. I mean, I'm going to be so curious. You know, so think this through. You're telling me there's 3,000 3, people out there that have these incredible attributes of a social media have three social medias, have incredible attributes of racing cars, and are part of uh, racing teams, part of organizations. I mean, it's a very detailed application. And when you go through that, you know, my mood is, is borderline like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they'll, they would, you know, here's the thing. How am I going to buy it? Yeah. You know how much money that is? They, they want $300,000. That's going to be a $310,000, $320,000 car. Yes. And so, and so how am I going to pay for that? Yeah, I mean, then that turns into what I start giving up and get rid of. Just the GTD, is it really worth it? Oh, my gosh. And since I'm not a track guy, yeah, you know. But anyways, I think it's fun to go through the process to even see if they, uh, they will uh, let me buy it. But you know, at the same time, wow. So, so what is your mood when you're on a motorcycle? And I talk about this all the time. Your mood is you're free. You got freedom. You're, you're free-spirited. You're going down the road. You can see things. You can taste the air. You can taste, you know, it's warm, it's cold. 
It's cool. Maybe it's misting out. Maybe you get in a rainstorm. I have many video. I have videos of, of some brutal rainstorms uh, with Julie and I. So your mood is uplifting, and that's the, and that's the thing about life. I think all of us want to be in a mood where we feel uplifting. Who really likes to be in a mood of being depressed? Who likes to be in a mood of being disgruntled? Who likes to be in a mood of being angry? And, and that's part of life. I mean, you wouldn't understand the other from, you know, either the other one from the one if you didn't go through those. But anybody knows, like today's a rainy overcast day. What's the mood of the person that bought a brand new car or a brand new motorcycle and was planning to go get it today? And now they, they face the challenge of driving the car home in the rain, which they don't want to do. Or riding the motorcycle home in the rain. So their mood now from yesterday was probably extremely exciting to today. It's like, ah, you know, it's just not, it's just not as exciting because, and, and, and some people, what they do, okay, Keithy boy, uh, is they just put it off to another day, which that's works for me. I mean, you're not going to be the end of the world if you can't get your car today. Even though you get your car, what's that mood? When you buy something, what's that mood? You know, you want that instant, you know, kind of gratification, the satisfaction of uh, having what you just uh, work so diligently to, uh, to create. But here's the thing. Once you get all these things, what is your mood? Huh. Yeah. Yeah, your mood is, wow, I've got a debt. I've got responsibility. I've got, um, you know, obligations. That's what I was saying. The mood conversation, I think, is so good to wrap up this week's of conversations is because the taxes that you pay to enable you to be able to afford something, and I say it all the time, people say, why don't you just go buy the car outright? Well, a $50,000 car, that's just seventy five, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 earned monies, so you really paid $80,000. I mean, if you really, stop and, you really stop and think about in life how much money you really spend, what you're about to earn to net that money to pay the bills, it's huge. It's huge because you have to make gross money to have net money. So on the tax side... That's, uh, you know, that's challenging, but at the same time, a lot of people, if they pay into more of the tax throughout the year, they're rewarded at the, at the, uh, the following year of getting a nice tax refund, and that's what, what drives a lot of car sales. And the, or the, uh, you know, the March, I think it's the March months, could be the May months, whatever, people get their tax refunds, and they use those monies to go buy something. And it happened to be probably most of the time a car. And so that's a, that's a good mood. It's not such a good mood. When your accountant calls you and tells you you owe $25,000 in taxes, then you're like, ah, you know, that mood changes instantly from the happiness to unhappiness. Who hasn't experienced that? But with these vehicles, you know, we, we try to, I think that these vehicles, we try to create the happiness mood through these cars because of how we like to personalize them, how we like to do things to them, and how when we drive them, we feel like it's us. I mean, sincerely, that's, that's the thing. Who doesn't ever have that feeling you're driving a vehicle? You're just like, you know, this just isn't really me. And, and, that's, and that's because you have this emotional feeling. If you have a disconnect of what you're uh, trying to get, and that's another challenge. Who doesn't have to be like me, that Triumph rocket that's sitting in my trailer, that took me a long time to come to closure that that made any sense to me. It took me three years of what really makes sense. And if you look at my collection of cars... I wanted a Camaro Z28 close to 10 years ago. Um, and how I got fixated on this, this all play out, is beyond believable on, that, on, on how I feel about that. Um, I'm very moody on the Mopar products because I really felt that the mood would be somebody be clamoring for these things. But as usual, Dodge overbuilds everything. Dodge is the worst. I mean, it really is. Dodge is the worst company to deal with. Buying high-end, high-performance cars because they just flood the freaking market. But then what they do is they'll just do like a 3,000 run on demons, be so lucky to get one, and everybody will clamor and try to buy one of those things and pay premium money. But meanwhile, these high-end, very expensive $100,000, $90,000 red eyes that were being built, um, these things in the market right now just don't have the value. I truly, I truly felt that once the Ice Age came to an end, on the V8s for Mopar, that this car now would be a buck twenty-five, buck fifty car. No, this car is a seventy thousand dollar car. What a joke! I mean, just pff, what a waste of time. I mean, truly. And so all that tells you is, okay, well, I guess there's somebody out there, but there's not. 
there's only 34 of these red eyes of this combination in the whole world. But yet, my selling dealership offers me 65 grand for it. Can you just hear me? Yeah, yeah. One of 34 in the world. Never be built again. Be unbelievable. Just, uh, just, yeah. How's your mood when you hear that, that, that conversation, right? I mean, sincerely, when you, when you go to trade your car, I mean, who hasn't had that feeling? You go to the car dealership, you really feel like you got a car that's a good value. The guy comes back, and they always lowball the hell out of you. They're business people. They always say, look, look, just, look the guy, just see if the guy takes it. I mean, come on. That's how they all operate. Just see if the guy takes it. And that's where they're like, oh, hell no, I ain't taking that freaking low a freaking trade, and I'm not paying that high number. But that's the interesting thing about where we are in today's world, what we just witnessed through a pandemic. Just think this through. We just went through a major pandemic in 2020, 2021. And what was the mood? The mood was the fear factor like never, ever seen in this country. And the meeting machine drove it 24-7 every day of your life. But yet, the mood was people went out and spent money like never, ever seen. And material things never, ever seen in modern times. Yes, it's a fact. Every RV dealer, I talk about it all the time. Every RV dealer... Every boat dealer, every car dealer, every motorcycle dealer, every bicycle shop, every fitness equipment dealership or whatever will tell you that their sales went through the roof. So the mood, that, that fear factor of the pandemic created a mood where people sought happiness by buying things. It's a whole psychological thing that people I don't even think have even really even evaluated on how that whole um, message was you're going to die was such a depressing moment in our lives to, to witness what was going on that the, it created the total opposite. That people wanted to have an uplifting feeling and mood, so they went out and bought motorcycles and RVs and boats. And that's what I'd hear from the motorcycle dealership owners and salespeople is they saw the most first-time motorcycle purchases, riders, ever, ever. Uh, RV dealers saw the most first-time um, RV um, purchases ever. Um, boat dealers saw the first-time boat uh, people ever. Why? It's because they were looking for an adventure to create a better mood in their life. And, and it's huge. And to this day, I'm even befuddled. But, I mean, but I'm not in the industry like others are. That the, the, the repose of RVs isn't through the roof. Because you would think so many people just raised their hands after they bought these RVs and realized it's not for them and they want to get out of them. But believe it or not, it's not radical in the RV industry that I know of in my area. Other people may know something better. Um, motorcycle side, yeah, I mean, I, but, we're, but the mood is back to the pre-pandemic. And that's what, that's what, that's what when you see me talk on my channel... And I go to these other YouTubers that constantly have the gloom and doom and gloom and doom. And it's like, but it's been around forever. I mean, there's always been uh, uh, people that can't pay their bills. Why is this something new and people are surprised about this? Uh, there's always been repossessions of vehicles. Why is this something new? And, and there's always been homeless people. Um, my, when my daughter rides around with me in this D.C. area, she, we were down in D.C. yesterday. And she's looking at right next to the Watergate in Georgetown, D.C., all these homeless encampments. And she's asking me, did you see this, you know, years ago? I said, you didn't see this, but you saw homeless people. And are there more homeless people more than ever? Yes, there is. Yes, it's a mental health issue that's uh, in our country at probably at the highest rate ever if people just have given up. But it's a mental challenge. I have picked up homeless people and tried to help them. And try to have them go do a job with me. It's a mental sickness. It is not anything about, um, I mean, it, it's, it's deep and heavy. I mean, it's very sad. Uh, so, you know, that's just, uh, you know, that conversation, you can go on all day long. But what's your feeling? Why do people that stand on street corners make a living? Because people have an emotional mood when they see a person standing there that needs help. And so people hand out money. And they try to help this person. And it's very debatable when you're handing this money out to people where you think this person really, is really in the dire straits they are and or you're just feeding their alcohol and drug addiction. And I've had homeless people tell me that. I said, I just gave you five bucks. What are you going to use it for? 
go buy liquor. I'm like, well, that's not very encouraging. He's like, I'm an alcoholic. I know. I'm sorry. I'm an alcoholic. I'm like, okay, well, I understand. So I'll ask people these questions when I give them money. Or I'll even say to them, tell me a story. I mean, I'm, I'm intrigued to know what's going on, what happened to you in life. And people will sit there and start to tell me their story. And to me, I learn from that. Because I've always been out in the streets. For me, I've been a street guy, knocking on doors and talking to people and walking up to anybody and start to talk to somebody. That's just who I've been. That's how I got really became a, uh, a, a business owner and I became a successful salesperson is because I just went and talked to anybody I could. And I learned who they were and how they are. And, uh, and that's the thing about life. Everybody wants to feel like you're, you're the most important thing in the world. I mean, that's who we are. We can only hope that others think the same way. But in today's society and the mood that's uh, around us, you have to scratch your head. I mean, it's, it's just incredible how we went from, through a pandemic of a mood of sorrow and, uh, and wanting to help so many to now we, we're in a, it seems like a social media machine of the hate is through the roof. The hate of others and the anger is just um, beyond believable of where we are in today's society. What has created that mood though? You know, what's creating the mood of our country at this level that you just, I mean, sincerely, what do you, what do you, as I'd love to hear other subscribers reach out and, and say, hey, you know, what do you, what's your, what's your feelings right now in this country? What's the mood feeling? Do you feel like, I mean, are you waiting something to happen? Um, we have an election year. Do you think that, that change is going to make things better or worse? Do you think it's going to stay the same? I mean, I'm just curious. I had one of my subscribers reach out, which is very nice of them. Because I know that I can voice um, political positions on my channel, but I'm not going to fight for Joe Biden. I'm not going to fight for Donald Trump. I'm not going to fight for you one of those guys. I'm not going to do it. But I'll just share ideas and views and thoughts that seems to be going on. And yesterday I made a comment that you just feel like Joe Biden's not the guy running the country. You feel like somebody else is. And for Barack Obama, he's one of the first sitting presidents that's no longer the president. They decided to buy a home in D.C. just a few blocks from the White House. And there's a conversation that how so many White House people shuffle between the White House and Obama's house all the time. So you have to have this inclination that Barack Obama is a directive behind the operations of Joe Biden. But one of my subscribers thinks that that's foolish. That for me to think that Barack Obama has anything to do with Joe Biden. But here's the thing. As a, as a YouTuber, I understand that's, that's fine. He has a position, I have a position, but let's not be enemies because of it, because we're not going to resolve, we won't resolve those challenges. For us, our challenge is, is to hopefully have people in power that have a mood that makes emotional sense and emotional reasoning instead of emotional feeling. That's the challenge. We live in an emotional feeling times more than ever versus real reasoning that what makes sense. And I, I just honestly feel every watch my channel does not feel that the mood of this country is correct by allowing others to come to our country to abuse to abuse our country. I mean we really are. We really are at a point in our in our country where so many are coming here and abusing what we have. And yeah, I mean once again that gets deep and heavy. And I'm not anti um Immigration. It's not about that. There's the kid. She's already been to hot yoga. Hey, where's Keefe? Call him. Call Kiefer. He's over there. Call Kiefer. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, I got a late start again this morning, as you're seeing. Yeah, he's out here running around. There he is. There he is. So, uh, so for where we are in our country now, I, I would, I would, my own feeling <clears throat> for me, so if anybody's, want to know my feeling, which <clears throat> I feel like the mood is what I just said to you, that we're not, we don't have the correct mood. And for, unfortunately, the powers to be just aren't handling the mood of what I think is appropriate in our country. And, you know, and it can, and it can go into so many variables and conversations on that. But what is the mood of the ice age versus the EV age? And which we already know. I think a lot of people totally are against the real EV age. And I love it how, how my um, subscribers, and they're not my, how, how subscribers on, on the channel um, reach out and make valid points. It's like I tell people, hey, the EV evolution revolution is not going to stop. 
and it's not. But the challenge is going to be the the power to supply to all these EV vehicles, and I, I get that. I understand. And right, the nuclear power plants to be able to handle it, whatever it may be, natural gas, whatever it may be. But the whole cha the whole point is, I enjoy others bringing to light, which yes, we're all on the same page that the EV age is a serious challenge. But the mood by so many is. They think it can happen, but the mood by so many others is like you're in a pipe dream. You're delusional. There's, there's the uh, the birds. It's, uh, you know, they're they're living right up there. It just doesn't. Uh... But anyways, you know, you just know that. All right, so kind of getting a 35 minute conversation. We'll get upstairs. My glasses are frosted because of the uh, it's missing out here, raining, and the kid has the dog. So hopefully. Some things are under control upstairs, are they? As they get a water, because my throat is so dry. And have I, have I hacked and coughed this morning? Um, I don't think I have, have I? So, uh, yeah, and the Mustang. Yeah, what's my mood after what happened yesterday? Yeah, it just doesn't end. It doesn't end, man. So I don't qualify to have these high-end cars. I need to have a whole separate shop. Bottom line is, I just need to have a whole separate shop. And all the cars are parked somewhere else. That is the... Uh, the reality as the kid is up here and and she beat me to work today but she got an early start because she went to hot yoga with I, one of my subscribers biker bug he's like you should get a different like um icon no 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 oh, here we go it just doesn't end oh, yeah, yeah. the dog is back with a squeaky toy come on man just leave me alone get, get him over there yeah so he thinks I should have a V8 engine motor with ice. With ice on it. You know, I mean, it's iced over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, right. That's about right. That's It's ice age, right? That's my theory is that we're going to be iced over. We like the dinosaurs. Hey, kid, how you doing? Good. Did you have a good hot yoga? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What time did you leave? I kept key friends, just so I wouldn't be up at 6.30 or 6 a.m., whatever time you let him out. So that was good with you, right? So Tim likes to keep Keith in her bedroom last night. I got in. I didn't even go in until 10.30. I was talking to Tim until 10.30 last night. I told him I bought him a cot. My good friend, I bought him a cot, which is the camper. He's excited. He's like, we should go camping, go traveling. So my good friend Tim's like, let's go see some places, man. I'm like, yeah, let's go do it. So, yeah, what's that mood, right? When you go on vacation, what's the mood? Well, everybody knows. If it's family and friends, that mood can kind of go all over the place if you get all that. So, uh, so anyways, the uh, the new uh, Shelby Super Snake Mustang, that's pretty exciting. Everybody out there should go check it out. It is sound like a really badass car, but I think that if I just think that, I think, sadly, the Corvette, you know, these, these specialty cars... The people, it's just, it's just incredible. The wealth, I mean, I just blows me away how rich people are. You know how much money people have made off stocks? I mean, sincerely, even for me, if I would have bought the stocks back just like three years ago, two years ago, when it was down in the low 20s, it's now, you know, went up to close to 40. I mean, if you had money and you invested it right, you could have made two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000, a million dollars, which people did. So, so these people have money. There's money out there. All these people, you know. Oh my gosh, just. But anyways, so what's the mood? So anybody out there on some channel, love to hear comments. What your thoughts are? Um, because as you know, the media machine, for the most part, tries to portray the mood of the country's fine and dandy, and it's great as Israel just bombed Iran. See, my theory, just so you know, my theory is that those drones were just drones. They were duds. They weren't the real deal. But what it did is it created Israel to maybe take a much more aggressive stance, which there's, it's, making, it's making it sound like Israel didn't get really radical yesterday on bombing Iran's key targets with missiles and maybe nuclear capability. But my whole point was, <clears throat> my thoughts were that <clears throat> this would give Iran the excuse to really, really get more violent. So it's kind of like, they drew the line, and they wanted to see if Israel would step over the line. So it would be very interesting to see what's going to go on. But the thing is, now the barrel of oil, barrel of oil is getting back up to $90 a barrel of oil. 
I can guarantee you that if we ever, if that really, that Middle East really does get into an all out war, you're going to see a buck 20, buck 40 oil. Now, I'm the guy that predicted two years ago barrel oil would go back down to $60, $70 barrel oil, which it did for the record. But I mean, I mean right now. So, one of the reasons I'm bringing that up to you is the mood. The mood, when you go to the gas station, you're paying five, six dollars a gallon. The mood, if you're having to sit in line to get gas. So, you know what's going to happen? These electric vehicles, you're going to be so lucky to get one. The whole, the whole, electric, but in so many ways, it'll be Joe Biden's dream come true. That if all these electric vehicles are the hottest thing in the market, and a green agenda is the hottest thing in the market, I mean, it'll be for the green agenda people, it'll be like, oh, this is fabulous. Let's just go create wars. And in so many ways, you know, let's just go create wars to, you know, advance the green agenda faster for the EV transition. Because tons of people will be buying EV vehicles instead of sitting in line at the gas station. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. That'll play out. So, and then my vehicles all go in value, but why would I get rid of them? Why do I want to go to the gas station? I can plug it into my house. Yeah, I know. If we have fuel at the electric plant, I get all that. So anyways, that's it. So everybody, yes, once again, appreciate all the comments, all the support. What are we doing next? Oh, my friend Chris went out yesterday and bought a brand new Denali long bed, um, 2500 series, but it's got like a 3500 rear axle on it or something like that. White Denali, and uh, he got a bigger truck. And I'm thinking, hmm, what's up, what is he up for that? So he said, well, this allows me to buy a bigger RV. Is it the RV competition? Uh-oh, competition? Is that a word I could use maybe next week? Yeah, competition. But I say HTV comments at gmail.com. So, hey, come on, guys. Just chill out. Um, <clears throat> get a sticker. Share the channel. Help the channel grow. I mean, I think the channel growing will be better. I think that if more people saw my channel, they would uh, enjoy more of this type of conversation instead of the gloom and doom that everybody else bitches all day long. That you're going to fit. I mean, do you realize back in the 1900s, 1930s, you know how many people during the Great Depression thought it was over? You think this through. You were going close to 100 years ago when we had the biggest financial crisis of this country, the Black Friday. And you could, you could have asked people 100 years ago that this country is done. It's done. Nobody going to make ever money, any money. Oh, my gosh. 100 years, 100 years later, more millionaires and billionaires have come out of this country than could I ever even imagine. I read this back in the 90s. That there are going to be more millionaires and billionaires ever in this uh, country um, in the coming, the coming years and times. And there still is. There's still there's an incredible opportunity out there for all of us. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching my channel. Kiefer is going to just play the squeaky ball for me. Yeah. So do I have ringing in my ears? Yeah, I do. And look who's here to, to help him go. So uh, thanks so much for watching my channel. Have a great day. And do you have any surprises? I don't know. Maybe. Uh -huh.